Hi everybody, it's time for a short video on completing a deconstruction. Now I know you've read the Kellner article already where he talks about why it's important to look at cultural artifacts like movies, TV shows, and other media constructions. And he provides for you a blueprint for how to deconstruct a piece of media. He suggests that we look at the environment in which it's created in the political economy. We look at the piece of media itself, that's textual analysis, and then we also look at the audience reception, how the audience uh, received the piece of media that was created. So I uh, know that you read the article, but I just want to provide a little bit of more information that I think will help you apply this to a piece of media that you'll be doing for your ad deconstruction group. So for this deconstruction, we're going to take a look at a particular piece of media. Uh, this is a clip from The Real Housewives of Atlanta. What you're about to see is Nene Leakes going to visit the house of Marlo Thomas. Nene and Marlo are new friends in a gossipy group of girls in Atlanta, and Marlo has invited Nene over to see her house. Both Nene and Marlo are obsessed with consumer goods, and so you'll see that very clearly here in this clip. We're going to take a look at the clip, and then we're going to look at how we might apply Kellner to analyze this piece of media. Here's the clip. Just for you, I dressed up. <laughs> it's your first time to buy Oh, Marlo. What? Do you love the chandelier? Oh, my God. That is so beautiful. I Look at all your you. stuff. You can tell you don't have children. Oh, stop it. I was very impressed with Marlo at the Bailey Agency opening because I respect the fact that Marlo gave Handy and Kim a nice nasty read and said good night. You don't deserve that I heard about you. Like, I've heard you're a big mama. Did you take care of God? I did a billionaire before Charles, not a big papa. That's what I said. <laughs> Me and Marlo are probably similar yeah. where we're not going to let somebody, like, run over us. This is my bedroom. Bitch, this is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. You are paranoid. I'm million-dollar room. I need to know if I got some stalkers here. Oh, and I need to know God. if they're running out the back door. Marlo, I am just like, oh, my God. It's not like it was a 10-acre property. You have to keep your eyes closed. Marlo, I'm not. You Just don't, walk slowly. Don't mess up my eyebrows, I'm not going to mess up your eyebrows, crazy fool. Come on. Okay. <laughs> you know how I love shoes. I know I you love the I oh said, you need to love the shoes. Marlo. Damn, look at this one right here. Oh, yeah, those are Louis Vuitton. And you have the ones with the leopard, too, don't I you? I do. You know, this is my favorite section over here. My Chanel bag. Oh, that's you have cute. to get a Chanel. Oh, you just this is hate such it. Such a okay, that's not you. I won't make you do it. This is one of my little favorite ones right here. I wouldn't be nowhere with a patch on. Which one do you like better? This one. Which one? This one? Yes. All right, that's your first new Chanel from me. No, bitch. No, because I want well, you to have a Chanel. Well, I'm going to give you one of my bags here. Okay, well, you can. No. I'm talking about you can. I won't say no. You can. Marla, I am not taking no. a bag. No. Oh, give me I my bag. I never I'm a shoe girl. Marla's a shoe girl. I'm 5'10", Marlo's 5'10". When I walk into the room, I own it. When she walks into the room, she almost own it. So, you know, we, <laughs> we're a great pair. <laughs> So you've had a chance to watch the clip. I hope you use good media analysis and took an opportunity to watch the clip twice. Um, if you haven't, you might want to scrub back and watch it again right now. So what we're going to do first is we're going to give, provide a brief overview about the piece of media. When we're doing a deconstruction, first we really want to kind of lay the boundaries about what it is that we're talking about. So here's how we might approach doing an overview. Some bullet points that if we were writing a paper or doing a longer analysis, we would then use as our outline. So first we're going to take a look at what we're talking about. What kind of an artifact is this? This is a reality TV show and it is being distributed uh, by the Bravo Network by airing on their television network. 
um, we can uh, give a short overview of the story. Here we see Nini visiting the home of Marlo, and um, we know that Marlo is rumored to be a gold digger, so Nini's kind of checking her out. We can share a brief overview of what it is that we saw. We see girls getting together for afternoon tea and visiting, and that this really is about a conspicuous display of goods. Imagine one bird showing another bird how beautiful its feathers are. That's kind of the scene that we're taking a look at here. Very impressive, but no one is watching. Nini is sitting back and watching this display and judging whether or not she believes Marlo is an acceptable person. So this is a way that we can see media is showing us what kind of values, beliefs, and behaviors are desirable to other people. So that's a brief overview. Let's dig in on each of the three areas of Kellner to learn a little bit more about this clip. First, we want to look at the political economy. There are a few different ways that we could approach looking at the political economy. Whatever kind of media you're looking at, you have to really look at what is significant about that piece of media, because much could be said about every piece of media. Um, so here are some ways that we might look at the political economy. First, we might look at production and distribution. The Real Housewife of Atlanta is uh, shown on the Bravo Network. The Bravo Network used to be a fine arts channel, um, and as you can imagine, not a lot of people were watching opera on the cable channel, um, and they had a huge hit with a Real Housewives show that was created by Andy Cohen, who they brought over from Network TV. It was such a huge hit that it's now become a franchise with five different versions of it. That's a lot of TV shows, a lot of TV time, and that means a lot of ad dollars for Bravo. We could also take a look at the genre. Uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta is a reality show, and being a reality show, that means there are certain ways in which shows in that genre are constructed. Uh, reality shows around women typically show them drinking, flinging drinks at each other, gossiping, talking about each other the next day over brunch, um, and complaining about their bodies and their hair. So here in this uh, episode of Real Housewives, we can see women using consumer goods to uh, construct their identity, something that benefits not only the makers of the TV show, but the makers of consumer goods as well. So this is really encouraged in reality TV. Next, we could take a look at the ideological discourse. What are the things that this story is telling us about the ideologies of the culture that it is made in? What does it tell us about Bravo? What does it tell us about how that network functions within our culture? Um, what does it tell us about material goods, physical appearance, and participating in consumer culture? All of those are uh, a part of how this story contributes to the ideologies of America. The next thing that we want to do is take a look at the textual analysis. A particular text uh, communicates uh, information about that culture or about peoples or populations within that culture. When we take a look at this clip, we could look at it in a variety of different ways, and each one of those ways would provide some rich information for us to analyze. Uh, we could talk about race, about how uh, both of these women are black women, and they are really uh, seem to be very obsessed with consumer goods that are created by traditional fashion houses. So there's some interesting analysis there. What does it mean for uh, these two women to have uh, Coco Chanel bags? How did that get communicated to them that that was an important marker of status and power? What does it mean to be black and to display wealth in America? All of those are great ways to analyze the story. We could certainly look at gender in this story. There's a lot about female relationships in here. Even though these women are having a friendly tea, it doesn't seem as though there's a lot of judgment flying back, before, uh, back and forth between them. Nini rejects a few of the purses. Oh, I would never get caught dead with this. This is such a Okay, that's not true. I won't make you do it. This is one of my little favorite ones right here. I wouldn't be nowhere with a patch. Um, so it doesn't seem as though, even though they're friends, they're being very friendly to each other. What does this say about gender relationships between women? And what does it mean when so many reality shows show women fighting with each other rather than working together to uplift each other? And we could definitely take a look at class in this clip. 
This clip is all about consumer goods. And Marlo is showing herself to Nini, not by telling her what she's done in her life or what she's accomplished, but by showing her what she has. Paranoid. A million dollar room. I need to know if I got some stalkers here. Oh and you know God. they're running out the back door. And, all that. and by showing her she has so much that he, she can afford to give her very expensive handbags. What does this mean? about America, about relationships between people, and about our obsession with consumer goods. So, you know, we, <laughs> we're great care. All of those are great places to look at this particular text and a really valid way to analyze this piece of media. The next thing that we're going to look at is audience reception. And with audience reception, we want to think a little bit about how did the audience feel about this piece of media. People don't just passively consume media. They look at media and then they think about it and they make meaning of it. And sometimes they make meaning of it within their own life as well. So Real Housewives of Atlanta continues to be extremely popular. I think it's in its like eighth or ninth or 25th year by now. Um, and so it continues to be a real moneymaker for Bravo and for the women that participate in the show. Reality TV really emphasizes a particular kind of relationship between women. So what does this mean for women in real life? Uh, the past 15 years, the rise of reality TV has been matched by a rise in violence, both verbal and physical, among women. Rates of violent assaults among women are on the rise. Can we attribute any part of that to the modeling of negative female relationships in reality TV? That's what a good analysis would allow us to think about. And finally, we can look at how fans interact with that material and perhaps make meaning of it beyond the screen. There are actually Real Housewives fan clubs who get together and drink wine and watch the show. There's even a product, a day drinking wine, that was created for women who like reality TV shows and want to have a few drinks while they watch it with their girls. So what does this mean not only for women who are drinking in the middle of the day and watching reality TV, but for the things that they may or may not be doing because of that as well? Um, if you're day drinking and you have kids at home, I'm not too sure about um, and actually, if you're day drinking, I'm not sure about that. Find something to do with your time. So all of these are valid ways to look at how fans of the TV show may interact with the content in order to make meaning. I hope this was a helpful video to get you to think about media. Um, for your assignment, you're going to have to deconstruct an ad, and you're going to use this framework to deconstruct your ad. You're going to tell us not only about the text through textual analysis, but you're also going to tell us about what the audience may think and how this particular piece of media functions within the political economy. So choose an interesting ad or it'll be more difficult. If you have any questions about this or anything else, as always, you can tuck them in the form or put them in the email and I'm happy to respond to you. Hope to hear from you soon. Good job, B. <laughs> Cut.